I wanna talk about market positioning. So now that we know what market, so choose one market. Uh, people always ask like, how many markets can I go for? I would do one. Do one, learn how to sell that person, learn how to collect what they're creating when they get frustrated and they're rich. Then what I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna learn how to position myself in relation to that. That's what we're gonna walk through real fast here. Okay, there's a selection, we're gonna go to positioning now. One time uh, I was mowing the lawn and um, I was, um, <laughs> I think my dad was just trying to figure out what to do with me. You know, as a kid, I was just that kid that was a little bit rambunctious and I don't know. So he would give me like random projects that I could go own. He knew I needed ownership and stuff. So one day, I'm the, I'm the oldest of six kids. And uh, one day he was like, he's like, hey, I need you to go insulate, drywall, mud, tape, and paint the garage. I was like, what? So I did, <laughs> all right? And you just needed me to go do stuff. All right, now I need you to go trench and install a whole sprinkler line, new one in the backyard. So I did, <laughs> I was like 16, 17, 18. I mean, this is just what he did with me. So one day when I was like 16, 15, 16, he was like, hey, I'm gonna have you be the yard manager. I was like, what? You're gonna go interview your siblings and you're gonna interview them for certain positions and roles in the yard. So that's what I did. So he had me go sit down, I interviewed him and I was like, all right, sibling number three, how would you like to weed this section of the yard every single week? And they, I, I didn't know how to do any of this. He wouldn't answer the questions. He made me go Google it, which is why I love that shirt. And I would Google, how do you write a contract? How do you do an interview? How do you do, and I had to write a contract and I sat down and I interviewed, sounds cheesy, but man, this is like the best education ever. And I sat down, I'd interview my siblings. All right, sibling number two. Now, what do you think it's worth to you to get paid to mow this part of the lawn? And we'd go in and sign the contracts. And, and um, I did that with, you know, some of them weren't old enough yet, but <clears throat> I did that with three or four of my siblings and we had contracts on what they would do each month. And then I had to go bid to my dad in order to provide the service, right? So I was like, dad, I think it's gonna cost us $50 a week to do this. And he's like, no, 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 but I'll give you 40. I was like, done. Right? And then whatever was left over, I'd pay my vendors, <laughs> pay my, my siblings, and that's what I got to keep. But my butt was on the line for all of it. So if one of them just decided to not show up or do it or whatever, or want to sit on the couch, I had to go do it, and I'd keep their money instead. It was a really cool lesson for all of us. I had to learn what an invoice was. I didn't know what an invoice was. I had to go Google it, figure out how to do it, and invoice my dad in order to get paid. I was like, hey, dad, you owe me like 40 bucks. He's like, invoice me. <laughs> I was like 15. I was like, what? What is that invoice? Just pay me the money, right? <laughs> like, so anyway, I started out hating it, but it became one of the coolest things, and yard work has always been very therapeutic for me. I think some of it, I don't know. So it, <laughs> it's a totally side story. That was not meant to be there. Okay, so once I was mowing the lawn, and I was mowing the lawn, this is about a year and a half ago, and I was thinking about all these stories, and I was thinking about this, uh, I was thinking about, um, I was listening to a book called uh, Blue Ocean Strategy, thinking about these principles. And I had this major realization that kind of slapped me and it was very hard for me to, to, to realize. Yeah, yeah, fish slap, exactly. You've been falling a while, <laughs> that was a long time ago. Um, I had this, anyone else ever had this question? Why are other people who aren't as good as me making more than I am? How many of you guys you know you're better than the majority of the market than what other people do? And they get paid more? It's like, why, this seems so backwards. Okay, what I'm gonna walk through right now solves that problem. It solves the starting artist problem, uh, solves the, anyway, it has to do with market positioning. And what I started realizing is that there's a huge difference between talent and positioning. And while we can be the best at the thing in the world, it means nothing if you can't position it, okay? Um, there's a Mark Joyner is one of Russell's first mentors. I got to meet him. We actually built a funnel for him um, for one of his books. Did you guys ever see um, Mind Control Marketing? that book. It's kind of like an old school one of yesteryear, but anyway, we built a funnel for him. And uh, market positioning makes things new. There's a great quote from his book. The prime, uh, the prime directive in positioning is to be the first on the market. That's all you're doing, right? How many of you guys are selling something that is similar to what is also being provided to some, like someone else is some, <laughs> I can't speak. Someone else is selling something similar to you. This is how you look new, okay? It's with positioning, <clears throat> okay? And I want you to understand that positioning is always greater than talent, right? Which is why someone who's worse than you can make more than you. I was looking at people on a stage and I was like, why are they making more than I am? I don't get it. This is crazy. And what I realized is that it, this was the thing. 
I was like, I, I can't believe the questions they're asking. They, they don't understand that. They don't understand that. I was better than them. They were getting, made, they were getting paid way more than I was. Okay. Um, my business has grown far more due to market positioning than any, incre- than any incremental increases in talent. I want you to understand that Austin Dixon is a way better funnel builder than I am now. Okay. My talent in funnel building, because eh, I don't do it anymore. Right. But why is our revenue going up? This. Okay. Just two simple ways to position yourself in relation to your market. And that's what I want to walk through real fast. They are complementary. And the other one is competitive. I can be have complementary positioning or I can have competitive positioning. What's my positioning with click funnels? Complimentary. complimentary. Right? Someone was like, are you going to go out and be the next funnel guy? I was like, no, the current one is Russell Brunson. <laughs> It'd be suicide. All right, so I'm going to be complimentary. And I'm going to create offers that are complementary to the ClickFunnels offers. Okay, so this is an example of ClickFunnels early market positioning. Now, if you look at the way, uh, so ClickFunnels was almost a failed thing. And I know you guys have heard this. I've said this before on Sales Funnel Radio, but just to kind of recap with it real fast. Um, ClickFunnels, <laughs> okay, ClickFunnels goes and uh, it took them six or seven times to learn how to sell ClickFunnels. Think about how amazing it is. They couldn't figure out how to sell it. So it was almost an abandoned project. And it wasn't until... Russell was on try number six or seven. Uh, he can't, uh, he thinks it's seven. Anyway, but also, anyway, he also, also said six. Mike Fulsame reached out to Russell one day and he said, hey, come sell this thing that you're doing called ClickFunnels. And he literally said, ah, no one's buying it. I don't know, we'll figure it out. He's like, oh, well, you gotta come sell it because I already told everyone at this big event I'm doing that you're coming to sell it. <laughs> and I was like, ah. So he goes and he gets on a plane and he makes a few tweaks to the presentation and he gets on stage and he closes 40% of the room. Oh, oh my gosh, that signifies far more than the money. So he goes and he gets on the airplane and on the airplane ride back home, he starts texting every affiliate that he knows. We're going to be rich. We're going to be rich. We're going to be rich. When can I do a webinar? We're gonna... This is why he started doing two to three webinars live a day for like a year is because he had validation from a stage. And what he had tweaked and what he had changed was the positioning of the message. Okay. So uh, how many of you guys have ever read any of these books? You got Expert Secrets, Blue Ocean Strategy, Play Bigger. Yeah. All these books talk about the principle of red ocean versus blue ocean. So if ClickFunnels is a blue ocean, what is its red? Websites. 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 The website market. And this was like the major change. What he did is he started throwing rocks at the website market. So is it complementary or competitive with websites? Competitive. Competitive. Right? He's saying, don't use that. Come on over here and use this thing called funnels. All right? So he's positioning where, so websites is now its market. And he started going to the website market, finding the frustrated people who still can't make any of the money. Big, massive market websites, obviously, right? Right? If he knows the dream who is in there, but it's that location he finds his who, and it starts exploding. <clears throat> then what does he do after that? Expands. This is why I say choose one. You got to test your message. Okay? He goes out and he starts doing, now he, if you don't know, he, he was the number one in two MLMs at the same time <laughs> because of funnels. So he had a huge reputation in the MLM space. He goes and starts selling stuff from the network marketers and selling click funnels to them. And then he goes out and he starts doing it to software. Okay, but same question. Complimentary or competitive to MLM and software? Complimentary. He's not saying get rid of software. He's not saying get rid of MLM. He's saying this in addition to. It's complimentary. Okay. Retail. He does it with the retail. Uh, one day after, it's actually Russell's first time speaking at um, <clears throat> Grant, Card- Grant Cardone's 10X event. Um, he and Dave went, they came back. I, was, I don't remember what I was building, but he walked in the office and he goes, dude, you'll never guess what happened. I said, what? He goes, I sold. It was awesome. We did like 40% of the room again. It was so cool. And as I'm walking out, someone walks up to me and says, Russell, I would have bought it, but you didn't say it worked for B2B. And he's like, it works for B2B. Are you kidding me? So what we did is we went back to all of the sales messages. And you guys ever seen this slide? This are, these are the markets. Okay, so then we just go in and add them in. And now the person identifies and says, oh man, like the reason why B2B is in there is because of that story. Okay. And so every time someone walks in now, and now the markets are identifying themselves for him. It's very easy on him now. But what about this? Oh, no, it definitely works for that. Let's go add that to the who's his workforce slide. 
And let's go start running some ads for the very specific who in that market now. Does this make sense? This is how you expand and you grow beyond markets like this. And this is, uh, this is how it works. So market positioning, you have to understand, is how people in your market fit you into what they already know. This is why you choose someone who's already frustrated. This is why you choose somebody who has had um, a certain level of education already. Because they don't know what a funnel is. <coughs> right? If they don't even know what a website is, it's going to be really hard to talk about a funnel. <laughs> right? For him to go and position competitive against that. He's going to have to educate him what a website is and then a funnel. Helpful? Okay. Is how people fit you into what they already know. Um, <clears throat> so one of the biggest questions people ask me is like, Steve, but my product really isn't truly that new, right? And this is, again, how you solve that. Um, there's other people selling something similar. I'm going to teach you how to make an offer around it so it really is unique. But positioning is one of the biggest reasons for you to go and be new also. Um, anyone ever read this book, 22? Laws? Yeah. Love this law. This is one of the laws from this book. This is the law of leadership. It's different than you're thinking, though. It's better to be first than it is to be better. Seth Godin actually teaches um, you either have to be first or the best, but it still is better to be first than it is to be better. And market positioning is how you take something that's existing, if someone else is already kind of selling it, and you position it as if new. Okay, I'm going to go through some examples of that here in a little bit. <coughs> For example, we did 1.6 million on this day. Okay, now I want you to think about this. We had our product, we turned it into an offer, and then we added a story. But think about this, just from the eyes of the people who follow me. Russell Brunson's top funnel builder goes and he leaves funnels, or click funnels, and now he's out on his own. What do you think people want from me? How many funnel building agencies are there? Billion. I'm not going to compete with that. So this is me doing exactly what I'm talking about. I don't sell a funnel building service. I do sell an offer building service that happens to build your funnel. Does it make sense? Okay. Um, uh, David Ogilvy, right? Same thing he did with Dove and soap. It's not soap, it's Dove. Is it soap? Yeah. Okay, but he positioned it as new. So when you take something that you're already selling that's kind of like already kind of out there, the easiest way to go sell a lot of it, you got to make it new, make it different, but that doesn't always mean you need to make the product new and different. Just the messaging and how you position it in relation to the market is like one of the biggest tricks ever. Okay, I'm just go like a little oink, a little valley bomb. It was good stuff right there. Some mics I can drop anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. So we're going to do a little so what here. And um, this, I'll, I'll jump right on afterwards. We'll go through some, some questions and stuff. But this is what I want you guys to choose. Do it in this order, okay? Do not start on positioning. Start on selection because you need something to position against in the first place. So you're going to go in and choose what's your market? Location, your marketplace, right? Is it rich? Does your dream customer go there? If not, it's not your market. Does your market create customers for you so then you can just collect them? It's super, way easier to do it that way, All right? And then finally, positioning, are you gonna be complimentary or competitive? So um, I sell some products in the network marketing MLM space. Am I complimentary or competitive with that market? Competitive. All right, I go in, <clears throat> what's the vehicle everybody is convinced they have to use in order to have success in network marketing? <laughs> Friends and family, we all know it. What do I throw rocks at? <laughs> right, not actually. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay. but what I'm doing is I'm walking in and I'm throwing rocks at that method. So if you're like, I don't know what to throw rocks at, Stephen. I know, I, know I know I'm competitive. You throw rocks at the vehicle. You throw rocks at the product, the method that everyone else is convinced they have to go after. What am I, again, with ClickFunnels, I'm complimentary. So how am I going to go com be complimentary with that? Still use ClickFunnels. Oh, some of you guys are trying it on your own. And some of you are business owners and you don't actually really want to be doing this on your own. You don't want to be a funnel nerd to pull this off. You know what? I'm a funnel nerd. Let's go build your offer. We'll build your funnel too. Does that make sense? And I'm complimentary to it, waiting for people to get frustrated. That's how I position. Very natural, easy, growth, high growth sales like that. <clears throat> 